And good afternoon, everybody, and welcome, welcome, welcome to Friday and Friday edition of Talking Sports. I'm Sergeant Rock. That's Mike Cox. Hey. We're soon to be joined by Joe Stovall. Here's what we're going to be talking about today. Dallas owner Mark Cuban apologized to Trayvon Martin's parents for a statement he made during an interview on Wednesday. We'll tell you what that statement was. Also, Shelly Sturdy, Sterling, Donald Sterling's uh, wife, has agreed to negotiate the sale of the Clippers with the NBA. Also, more details has surfaced about how the alleged tape was put out. Wait till you hear what happened. Also, uh, some say that the checks have already been mailed out. The NBA commissioner has already mailed out checks to the losers of the NBA Finals conference games. They continue this weekend. They say there's no money in an Indiana-San Antonio final. Yeah, okay. But the way San Antonio played Wednesday night against OKC, you couldn't tell. Go Spurs, go. Yeah, they just totally mishandled Kevin Durant. Kevin Westbrook. Matter of fact, they almost got fighting on the bench. Frustration settling in there. Also, Memorial Day is coming up Monday. We want to send out our congratulations to all the grads. We're going to do all that. And we got all that and more coming up on this edition of Talking Sports. Oh, yeah, by the way, Mike. Yes, sir. I went in and put in my order for my uh, 12 Years of Slave outfit. Did you not? You too can look like a slave for the 1800s <laughs> for just $19.95. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> we'll tell you all about that coming up on this edition of Talking Sports. You stick around. Welcome back. Talking Sports WBCP 1580. The Memorial Day weekend special. You military men, I salute both of you. Thank you. Thank you. Salute all our vets out there and to all those who made the ultimate sacrifice. Yeah, sometimes I feel lucky. Matter of fact, I know I'm lucky. Hey. Lucky, blessed. All of that. All of the above. All of that. So I hope uh, when you're barbecuing this weekend or popping the top on a cold one, whatever choice of chill <laughs> beverage you choose, you remember what the weekend is really for. Mm -hmm. Monday, 3 o'clock, moment of silence. Three o'clock in the afternoon. Is that when it's going to be? Yes, sir. Okay. Fifteen hundred hours for those of you that know. I don't know. Yeah. What I you do is you go all the way up to twelve, uh -huh. and then you add one. So twelve, twelve oh one. Hmm. <laughs> I've got a lot to learn. Yeah, 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 look, yeah, yeah, look when the professor, when the professor sighs like that, it's like. It's a waste. Yeah. Get it incomplete and get him out of my class. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it doesn't matter what time zone you're in. 3 o'clock, 3 p.m. 3 p.m. Okay. So 3 p.m. across the country. Across the world. Across the world. Hopefully. It'll be, be a moment of silence for those who made the ultimate sacrifice so that we can enjoy the freedoms that we have, which is one of them. You can barbecue on that day. Talking sports. Yeah, we do that too. You know, there's some, some countries around the world that, Certain stuff you can't talk about. Canada. You know, in Boats of Ovina, you get stoned for doing what we're doing here. Boats of the, the, the who what? Yeah, see. Now, where is that? Located? Hey, it's, it's all, it's uh, over, East, there. E o over there, Eastern European, Middle East, Africa. <clears throat> what, all three of us get stoned or just you two? I think Do it. Well. <laughs> oh, he would? It'd probably be me. Yeah. <laughs> well, wait a minute. Because you can't miss him with that yellow shirt. That's true. <laughs> That's very true. I will keep my shoes down here where nobody can see him. Yeah, hit the wall you can see. <laughs> Stovall, recon. You're on the point. <laughs> Why, Sarge? Because you got on, on that shirt. shirt. <laughs> we'll, we'll be able to see you. Right. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, he got on that shirt. Send him first. <laughs> and next thing you know, you <laughs> you hear a phew, 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 phew. <clears throat> All right, <clears throat> we know the, the enemy but is. You know what? Back in the day, you know, Point Man was one of the safest guys uh, out there uh, on the trail. Really? You yeah, know? they waited for him to go by and then let everybody else up. I want to be on Point. Now you learn something. Hey. Nobody wants to walk Point. But, hey. So that's how they would set up the ambush. Huh? That's how they set up the ambush. 
the only drawback was then the enemy was between you as a point man and oh, yeah. the rest so of you're them. behind enemy lines. Ass yeah, pretty out, much. Ass out booty day. <laughs> <laughs> Send all letters to in case uh, attention. Sergeant Rock. Sergeant Rock. Hey, why should I shoot and it? Right. That once again, me being a non-military guy, I, hey, that's the lingo that you have to use to give the descriptive of what the point man once he fell behind enemy line. So what you're saying is that the guys in the middle took the brunt of the hits. The point man, he usually became a POW. No, well, no. Had to make the bad tape. No, he, if he was a good point man, he would have kept moving. No, he would have doubled back and held down. Or if he'd been like me, I'd have made like a, a bush. With that shirt on. With this yellow. Oh, yeah. I'm the only yellow bush in the jungle. Yeah, and all that green tree. <laughs> there he is. Yeah. Ooh, there he is. All right, let's talk support. Uh, first thing on the list, let's talk about, are we throwing away around the race car just too much nowadays, Joseph? No. I mean, there's a point of being political. Politically correct. incorrect and politically, politically correct. correct. Now, I'm pretty sure by now everyone has saw the Mark Cuban uh, interview. You know, he is the owner of the Dallas Mavericks, in which he says that basically, you know, every everybody has some form of bigotry, mm -hmm. including himself. Mm -hmm. And uh, he went on to make a, a statement that uh, if he was walking down the street and was coming upon a, a African American wearing a hoodie, that he would more than likely, like some do, cross the other side of the street. Okay. And then he also went on to say that <coughs> if he was approaching uh, a white guy, bald headed, tatted up, that he would cross back to the other side of the street. Mm -hmm. Now he's catching a lot of flack that, you know, this was a racist statement, and a lot of people uh, had Trayvon Martin come to mind when he mentioned the hoodie, so he made the point to uh, <coughs> apologize. Let me dig it up right here. Damn. He stands by a statement, though, but he says, in hindsight, I should have should should have used different examples. I didn't consider the Trayvon Martin family, and I apologize for them for that. Beyond apologizing to the Martin family, I stand by my words and and substance of the interview. All right, scoot on up here, Mike. I'm yeah. good. Your I stretched out the cord. My thoughts. Uh, you asked <laughs> earlier. Is the race card being played too much? And I'll be consistent with what I've said before. Race card is not, it's nothing you play, it's the hand you're dealt. Mm -hmm. And going to Mark Cuban's point, I actually respect what he said because I've said this before and I'll say it again. Until we have a real conversation about race, you cannot get away from, as you said, the race card. What Mark Cuban said, I agree with. We all carry some prejudice about something. Mm -hmm. And he used that example of the hoodie and the tatted guy to talk about how preconceived notions and and fear can play into decisions that we make. Right. But he also went on to say in the position of power that he's in, it's up to him and people like him to try to eradicate these type of things. I will say this. This is where, and we talked about this probably two or three weeks ago with the Darius Paul situation. We've got to be able to distinguish between racism and, as he said, prejudice and bigotry. Everybody can have some preconceived notions and use stereotypes in describing particular groups. Mm -hmm. Racism is about the action of using those stereotypes to hold one group down and make that group feel inferior. <clears throat> and that's why when we talk, I always talk from the standpoint of institutional racism. You know, when people, you know, say, well, you know, I work with Sam and Sam's a good guy. I've got black friends or you're a black person. I've got white friends. We're not talking about it from what an individual can do in terms of just their day-to-day -day living. We're talking about how systems and institutions obviously affect certain groups compared to others. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to look at what's happening in 
social settings in terms of uh, when unemployment numbers are given out, how some groups uh, represented disproportionately higher. Some fare better than others. Exactly. That's that institutional racism that a lot of people can't get their hands on. But in terms of prejudice and bigotry, if I like a certain ilk, for lack of a better term, in terms of a certain group of people, that comes from what? Life experience, preconceived notions, mm -hmm. and I think for a, a better part, allowing ignorance to shape my decision making. Okay, let's be honest with folks now. Prejudice, it's a learned behavior. It's a learned, for the, yes. For, for the most part. Mm -hmm. We are taught prejudice. Right. Now, as far as uh, 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 the, the bigotry, I don't like this, I don't like that. Like you said, that's from personal experiences. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So, for example, let's go to his statement about, I see the, 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 the African-American kid in a hoodie, and I'm walking across the street. Did that offend a lot of African-Americans? Yeah. But guess what? That's real to Mark Cuban, and not only Mark Cuban, that's real to a lot of other Caucasian people. Why? Well, there's several factors. News media gins up a lot of this stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, number two, as I said, ignorance, lack of familiarity with people. But three, which is to me the more important, Real life experience. Now, that could be an African American walking down the street, coming upon an African American wearing a hoodie, and, and he cross the street. And he will cross the street. And that's the point. Why would they do that? Real life experience. Right. Preconceived. No. The point is, it's not just germane to Mark Cuban or one particular group. That's why the conversation. That's why I'm glad he said what he said. Everybody's got to talk about their experiences so that it may not change who Mark Cuban is. It may not change who I am or, or, or Mike or yourself, but at least we understand. Right. That's where I think where the issue gets lost is that you said earlier, uh, you'll hear a lot of people say, oh, you know, why does everything got to be about race? Because it is. I don't have a problem with that. But that's what I, that's my opinion. Yeah, well, you know, when, when I saw the, I, I actually saw the interview, and then I read this article here. I'm like, well, what did the dude do wrong? What did he say wrong? But I think I, it goes you know? to your point about political correctness. Everybody is so sensitive now that if somebody says something that doesn't fall lockstep with the thinking of everybody else, <clears throat> something's wrong with that individual. No. I have no, if somebody, first of all, I would prefer to know your feelings as opposed to you patting me on the back and smiling in my face. And as soon as I walk away, you're the Donald Sterling mm -hmm. as opposed to the Mark Cuban. So, uh, Mike. Just a couple things. Um, what else he said, or what I heard that he said was, <clears throat> he was kind of referenced, referenced, Reference, uh, referencing it, there we go, to the Donald Sterling situation and all that stuff. But first of all, kudos, like you said, Joe, to, to Mark Cuban for being in the society we're in right now mm -hmm. that we live in, for being brave enough to say that. Right. Because a lot of rich white men <clears throat> would not because, oh my goodness, what's going to happen to my brand now that I said that because somebody's going to think I'm a racist. But right. nevertheless, what he also said that I really liked was he doesn't mind if stupid people talk. Let them continue to talk so we know who they are. Bingo. Going to Sam's question, <clears throat> do we play the race card, if you will, too much? I will answer it by saying this. I heard this locally the other day. Another individual that I've talked about to you guys before said that he has he has a particular football team, and and the the purpose of this or the point of the discussion was what the Senate's doing with the name of the Washington Redskins, and he said that he didn't it didn't bother him for the National Football League team that's based in Washington to be called that because he doesn't have a problem if and he used his team's name as an example, who's a bird that you and I, Sarge, are fans of. He said, that doesn't bother me if people call me a cardinal. And my thought was, 
but dude, none of your cardinals have been hung from a tree because of their skin color. So to answer your question, yeah, we do need to continue to talk about it. And, you know, our four listeners or whoever it is, and, and you two guys have heard me jump on my soapbox a few weeks ago. But, and as, as Joe and I have talked about off the air, it's a conversation that needs to, to happen because it's still an issue. And institutional racism happens. Racism, racism is overt down south. My opinion, covert up north. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but just because we have an African-American president doesn't mean that everything's gone away and everything's hunky-dory. So those conversations do need to continue, or they need to start taking place. And it, until... Someone can you, until one of you guys can introduce me to someone you know, and one of your f- friends for d- just for the example, and their first thought is not is he a racist, then the conversation needs to continue to happen, and exactly. we continue to need to talk about it. Great uh, point. Well, I can be I, I can say this on and this is how I feel about all of this. As long as this world continues to turn, mm-hmm. as long as there are people of different colors. Ethnicity, different religions, different whatever. There's gonna be some form of racism. It's something that is not gonna go away. Mm-hmm. We can sit here and we can talk about it until the world do stop <clears throat> turning, and it's not going anywhere. You're right. So you know, it's it's basically uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Ill conceivable that racism could ever be abolished. But does that mean we have to stop talking about it and no. trying to improve the situation? No. Right. And I think that, to me, it, it goes to the issue of recognition and understanding. <clears throat> you just gave, in the sports world right now, the biggest conversation is in the NFL, you got 50 senators right now who want to propose a bill to have the, the Washington team change their name from the Redskins for an individual and I, and I think this this is where this conversation has to go you have an individual who says to you you don't see a problem with the team being named that it goes to my point about life experience if you don't have any Native American friends if you've never recognized how uh, insidious that name is how ridiculous <clears throat> Out of all the teams in the league, in all the sports leagues, we have a team named after the color. A derogatory term. A derogatory term, the color of a particular, of the indigenous people to this country. And and, And the history of it is the original owner, he was a separatist. He was a racist. He was one of the last teams to integrate in the NFL. So that's where the history, when people know that history about where did that name come from, then that's when people do, just like with the Donald Sterling, oh, that's what it is. Right. You know, and that's why the conversation has to go on. Will it change? And and see, I think this is the other thing about bigotry and uh, 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 prejudice. Are you going to change the What's in the heart of another man? Probably not. Probably not. If 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 a guy says, "Hey, I'm prejudiced," he may do go through some micro changes, small changes, but his life experience is still his life experience. The goal is for the next group to be a little bit better than the current group, and that's what's happening in the world. As each group gets better, but going to your point about will it? Be abolished until we will all fences come down no will all barriers be broken no but each time it gets a little better you know it's just like taking another scoop of sand off the beach and that's what we have to strive for do we have to be immersed so deep into it that we forget about just our day to day basic living mm. to me the answer is no on that well, and, and kind of to your point as well, Sarge, not every single flipping thing in the world is about race. Right. Sometimes people are just stupid. 
as I'm fond of saying. <clears throat> but, um, but, but, you know, I I understand why Cuban apologized for the, you know, to the Trayvon Martin family. I honestly, and call me up and yell at me, I don't care. I don't think it was really necessary because <clears throat> in the context of, of what he was talking about, he was talking about stereotypes. Right. And the stereotype of the young African-American male criminal is he's wearing a hoodie. Just like the stereotype of the skinhead is he's all tatted up, shaved head, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right. So, and, I, and I'd like to add to what uh, Mike said there. To have the conversation, I think that's the other part. People shouldn't have to apologize for their opinions. And to that point, do does Mark Cuban have to be so sensitive to recognize every when you're talking, man, am I talking about Trayvon Martin situation when I mm-hmm. use this analogy? Or fruit you know, or this right. or that. you know is, am I talking about kids who got killed, in Newtown? When we're talking about certain subject matter, I think that's where the political correctness is going to run amok, is that when somebody says something, people immediately want to run and attach an event to the words and say, see, Sarge was insensitive because by using that analogy, he wasn't thinking about such and such family. Right. No. Say what you have to say. Have the conversation. Don't apologize for your words and try to become better. You know, because I think in the final analysis of this deal, he's talking about it from the standpoint of the Donald Sterling issue. How far is this slippery slope going to go? Does Donald Sterling need to be removed as an NBA owner? The answer is yes. Without a doubt. Right. The answer is yes. What Mark Cuban was doing was opening up the conversation for a more broader thing of if somebody just says the wrong thing, is it going to get to the point where, you know, a guy at a private party says something insensitive about a particular group? Does he immediately lose his team right, right, because right, of exactly. that? Are we going to get to that? And I think that's why that conversation needs to be had. Will Mark Cuban vote no in terms of having Donald Sterling get that league? The answer is no. Oh, you don't vote yes. Get yeah. him out of here. Yeah. Exactly. Because it hurts his brand it, as well. There yeah. you go. And – Mark Cuban, if he's nothing, he's about uh, he's a billionaire for a reason. Really? There you go. And you know, it, it, I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that we live in a everybody gets a trophy freaking society, and that's ridiculous. Yeah. <clears throat> My right. opinion, but then I'm old and grumpy, so yeah, well, okay, that's true. Uh, welcome to the club. Yeah. If you have an opinion, give us a call three five nine nine two two seven, and we get you on air for that. Let me tell you what I saw. Something disturbing. I was on the uh, looking on Facebook. They 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 had two pictures. On the left side, I guess it was some guys at the NFL Combine. Mm-hmm. They were standing there with their shirts off, and you know they was you know measuring them, body fat, and this, mm-hmm. that, the other, you know. And then next to it, they had black and white picture, slave uh, slave auction. Mm-hmm. You know the white Same guy thing. standing there, mm-hmm. you know black guy standing on the thing, and you know he. Was, Looking at him and filling filling him up, you know, I find it to be very disturbing. What do you think about that picture? Why do you find it disturbing? Right. Hmm? Why do you find it disturbing? Because I mean, they was comparing the NFL combine to a slave auction. Are, are you saying that that's the wrong thing to do? The, re- is, the reason the reason it, I asked the question was in its context, I just thought it was you know like wow. Ten years ago, nobody would have thought to put those two pictures together. Right. It was no big deal. So that's why I asked, why did it disturb you, and in what context? Are you saying it's a bad thing to do that? Which yeah, well, of course you know, it is. You, you but know, are you comparing the NFL to slavery? Yeah, because you know you just had a conversation. Well, you know that is legalized slavery. The NFL, uh, the college kids. You know, uh, you know playing ball for no money and this, that, and the other. So, you know, when I looked at the picture, all that went through my mind. I was okay. like, you know, that's great. I think it's very complex because <laughs> let's let's break down to the purest form of what we're talking about. We're talking about the biggest, the fastest, and strongest. And you've got one person who's the owner, and they're going to bring them into their group. Typically an old white guy. There you go. And how many people we're going to have in this group? About 50-53 is what the NFL roster is, right? And each year, if one gets hurt, gets too old, what do we do? We get rid of them. We bring another one up. 
So that's where it's analogous to that. The complexity is now, is this about choice? Exactly. Because now, we're not just talking about black guys, we're talking about Samoans, we're talking about white guys, we're talking about African Americans, we're talking about Hispanic. Hispanics, now we're talking about an openly gay guy. So this is where the complexity comes in. We're talking about a lifestyle choice that you say, you know what? I'm going to take my physical attributes and I'm going to work on them, improve them in high school and college to get an opportunity to get measured, poked, prodded, pulled, and everything else. And make a ton, ton of, money. of money. Right. So that's why it's a complex, complex issue. Is there some parts of it that would take you back to that picture that you saw? Of course. Like Mark, Mark, uh, like Mike just said, you got an old white guy, usually is the owner of the team. You got a few other people. Then down at the lowest level, you got your coaching staff. And then you bring all these big young guys in to do your work. They're getting paid, but who's ultimately getting paid the most? The owner. <clears throat> when I when I heard you describe that, Sarge, the thought that was going through my head was, how dare you? whoever it was, compare the two things to one another. Because, you know, 150 years ago, 20 years ago, whenever it was, the people that were put on a boat and sent over here to become slaves didn't have a freaking choice. Right. So you're telling me, just as an example here locally, mm -hmm. that all the work that Nathan Shieldhouse did, and I know he didn't get drafted, but whoever, you know, all the work that, 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 that Teddy Bridgewater did, all that to try to improve what he's been given that God, God gifted God, God's gift of talent to him. You're going to compare that to slavery? I find I, and I of course cannot speak to it because I'm the non-person of color here. But I would find that incredibly insulting that somebody would take that after I've spent 20 years, 22 years working my butt off to do what I want to do, and then compare me to a slave. That's yeah. ridiculous, yeah. man. And. Like I said, my point, a little bit more broader in terms of complexity. I see exactly where Mike's going with it. I'm just saying that if you break it down to its purest form, you can see some of the elements of it in terms you can. Of, 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 of what you're doing based on just the human body makeup. The, like I said, we're, we're, we're purchasing the biggest, the fastest, the strongest. Going to Mike's point, though, and I agree with him on this area, it's a choice. But now this is where I go to that institutional stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, it, it, and does it does it get you as an individual when you sit back and you look at the numbers of African Americans in sports as we talk about on a every Friday basis? But then the numbers are down in places like being a lawyer, a doctor. Has the institution created the mindset that this is the only way you can become a successful? millionaire within the confines of the country is based on sports and or entertainment. So that's the reason why when when you look at an individual using Mike's point like a Teddy Bridgewater, you applaud him because of, as Mike said, the hard work he did. The question on the macro level, when you step back and look at the numbers, mm -hmm. then you say, institutionally, did you think you had an opportunity to do it any other way? Is it is it why Let's go to the point of management. All your players, or not all of them, but the majority are African American. But when you go up the ladder, those numbers shrink. The individuals who make the decisions, the general managers, uh, director of player personnel, all of that. Those individuals don't look like the people who are being picked. That's where I always talk about macro and institutional. Because then when you see that, then you start to go, hmm. hmm. But as an individual, going to Mike's point, I agree that, you know, you should not insult that individual for making that life choice. But was that life choice influenced by the institutions that we currently have? And that's why I say about racism, that's where the conversation has to begin, is talk about institutions and why are those institutions that way, you know? Okay. I've, I've said this before on the show. Use University of Illinois uh, athletic uh, complex, specifically uh, revenue generating football and basketball. 
you can bring in, what, 15 players on the team, 12 players on the team, and, what, 80% of the players on the on the team, basketball-wise, African-American. Probably closer to 90, but, yeah, I get yeah. your point. Football, about, what, 65, about a 60, somewhere in there, 60, yeah. 40. Two-thirds, something mm-hmm. like that. But then your student body is the other way around. Right, where your your representation is flip flop where maybe less than five percent are of African American are <laughs> African American descent in terms of students and that's where I talk about the institution now. So mm-hmm. it's like John Gross, Tim uh, Beckman can go out and find what they're saying is that we're finding the best. Mm-hmm. I'm fine I'm trying to get the best basketball player to win, the best football player to win. They just so happen to be African American. But then when we're talking about the student body, the representation is, as Mike <laughs> said, totally flip-flop. So is the goal of the institution trying to find the best student at, uh, best students, or is it just trying to find the best athletes to generate revenue? No, no, student athletes. Bingo. So. Well, and take it even a step further. Look at, at, at the percentages of faculty mm-hmm. at the U of I. I only know of two, yeah, Two professors that are, you know, regular professors that are African American, mm-hmm. and you know one of them, right? At least. Um, so, <clears throat> as as we've talked about before, whatever the institution is typically tends to reflect the area they're in. A lot of times, mm-hmm. and a lot of times, as you just said, it's it's disproportionate in terms of, you know, the the African American student or the student of color. And we all know that there's more white kids at the U of I than there are people of color. Right. And that's probably a different discussion. Hmm. <clears throat> so. All right. Well, we got to get ready to go to break. Before we do. I was getting the evil Monday eye. Right. On, uh, over in England, oh, yeah. the movie 12 Years a Slave has came out. Directed by on, a, on DVD. I believe he's of West Indian descent, Steve McQueen. Not the old white actor. Oh, I wasn't. I was thinking that a car. No, not <laughs> bullet. Anyway, <clears throat> next to the display, they have a mannequin with a slave outfit on that you can purchase. Yes, America. To get the true experience. You, too, can look like a slave. I don't know the price of this outfit because they didn't they, they have a price on that? I don't remember. Or do one come I, free I know it was the for DVD. the DVD. <laughs> you get one free with a DVD. <laughs> My question is if, if. You talk about crazy. Now, I wonder who idea that was. Uh, Probably some white guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'll admit it. Yeah, we're dumb. We're, we're buy the movie. Get a, buy the movie, get a free slave outfit. Well, my question would be not I mean, to make a little light of it, is if you do buy the movie and get slave outfit, do you then win an Academy Award? You might get one, you know. They might Maybe a you. replica. There you go. Yeah. So after mm. you watch the movie in the uniform. Then you get you send in a coupon Ronnie. to get your little man. Anyway. But with that but the, and obviously like you said, we're not making light of it, but what it shows you and that's why the conversation will continue. That's just, as Mike said, stupid people. It's just, because who, this is not even the thing. It's not who came up with the idea. Right, right, right. Who approved it? <laughs> right, exactly. Who said, hey, run with it. Let's run with it, Mike. <laughs> Great idea. Somebody didn't check with Steve McQueen, a British citizen, <laughs> and go, hey, do you think this is a good idea for your movie? They're sitting around. I see a conference table, Boy, 8 o'clock right. in the morning. Got the Danishes on the table. No, man, you got some Krispy Kremes on the table. <laughs> Tea and crumpets. Tea and crumpets. It's England, after all. Cheerio, old boy. I think that's an excellent idea. I'd swell. Let's run with it. <laughs> yeah, man. That's anyway. <laughs> but it just goes. Like I said, it just. It's, as Mike said, it's not about race. That's just stupidity. Yeah, it was. You, I mean, what, you, you haven't seen it. I've seen it. Oh, okay. but that's why. It's those. It's that thing that you see. You know how you said you saw the, the, the picture of the NFL yeah. come, and you were offended? I saw it, and I just rolled my eyes like, that's so dumb that I don't even want to give it a second look. And you just keep moving on. You had more colorful language than that. You know, well, that. yeah. What the <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got to go to break. When we come back, you know, uh, <clears throat> Donald Sterling's wife 
you know, she said she was going to fight to keep the team, this, that, and the other, you know. Adam Silver looked at her and said, poof. <laughs> so she's going to negotiate the selling of the team. Plus, we got the details. I got it right here on uh, how this Sterling, Donald Sterling tape happened to come to be. Mm. When, when we do that part of the program, we need to cue up the Kanye West, Jamie Foxx music. <laughs> Who? I ain't saying she's a... Oh. <laughs> all right. We got all that and more coming back up when we return. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Talk Sports WBCP 1580. UPTV Channel 6. Yo versus... 90-something. Yeah. 9 Just or 99. Just until you find it. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I want to get back to the... To the uh, Mark Cuban thing real quick, because, you know, I, it, it made me think of something that I do on a regular basis. Um, you know, when I'm walking down the street. Offend people? No. <laughs> when I'm walking down the street. You don't have to walk down the street to do that. Right. <laughs> when I'm walking down the street and yeah, I'm, 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 I'm approaching an individual, you know, be mm-hmm. they African American, white, or whoever. One of the things, the first thing I do as we get closer, I make eye contact. Mm-hmm. And I maintain that eye contact until you break it first. You follow? I'm with you. Because, you know, normally in a macho world. The alpha male. The alpha male will. Always maintain eye contact. Maintain contact. You will look away first. Just like you just did twice while I was staring at you. Oh, don't be looking at me like that. But you see what I'm saying? (laughs) But you see what I'm saying? But but what you're doing is you're sizing up the threat. Exactly. And where does that come from? Your personal mm-hmm. experience and your training? Yeah. Army training, <laughs> sir. Yeah, that you know that's that, that's what I do, you know. And 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 you know, I'm not saying that you're going to do something crazy or nothing like that. I'm just making sure you don't. Because you're staying what? Mm-hmm. Frosty. You're on your toes. Cool. You always know. Yeah, so if I'm ever walking down the street and you approach me and I'm yeah. looking at you, don't break the stare. <laughs> don't break the stare, right? Mm. Oh, and don't let me have on you can't see me glasses. Oh, then you really, you really, I got you. You got the bug eyed going in, don't you? So a visit to Carl for the elevator. But but you know that's that's my that's, that's but my but it goes to what we just talked about. Your own personal experience. That's it. That's what you do. What I do, I speak. Hey, what's happening? Yeah, you do that too. Right, but here's the crazy part. That's the other thing. You find out a lot of people don't like to be spoken. It don't matter what race they are. Why are you speaking to me? Shut up. I don't know. You leave me alone. Want, leave me alone. <laughs> and then you can yeah. assess the threat. Yeah. You know. Anyway, I just thought I'd bring that up. Take the safety off. That's it. And flap, you know, pop the holster. Yeah, pop the holster. Let them know you're serious. <laughs> All right. Uh-huh. They, they, I was just going to say, they do that every day in Texas. Uh, that's the reason why I live in Illinois. All right, Donald Sterling has agreed to allow his wife, Shelly, to negotiate the forced sale of the team. With this uh, guy right here. Yep. That was Adam, acknowledged. On Adam Sullivan put him up there. With the years. They didn't pin him back this time, did he? No, uh, Shelly Sterling has, uh, and her lawyers have been negotiating with the NBA since her husband was banned for life for, by Commissioner Adam Silver April 29th. While the league has yet to formally accept the arrangement, sources said... If she is willing to sell the team in its entirety, this would bring a startling quick end to what appears to be a uh, uh, projected legal battle. So, the NBA is not taking anything less than 100%. Oh, of course. Nor should they. Sterling and his wife have postured in the media only to sensationalize this. By sensationalizing, it increases the value of the team. They know what they're doing. The market value of the team, I mean, if they went quietly and, you know. What, what, what was it? Something like $500 million, something like that? Mm-hmm. Yep. So, so, come, <clears throat> what, they, what, they got, what, a few more weeks before they had to vote with the Board of Governors? June 3rd is when the vote's going to happen. Yeah. So, a couple of weeks. So, the team could be as much as 750000 There yeah. you go. They know what, I mean, first of all, Donald Sterling, he's a businessman. The man said when he bought the Clippers 30-some-odd years ago, he was going to invest a penny in them anyway. He treated the Clippers the same way he treated... Like a tax write-off. 
like it, it was just like his rental properties and apartment buildings that he bought and why he got all those charges of discrimination. Because the man didn't care about the, you know, they were rat traps. He knew making it. Making money. He was making money. He did the same thing with the Clippers. And now the value of the team is appreciated to ungodly numbers. And he's like, okay, have a million sold. <laughs> but I'm going to, but what keeps him relevant is by making the comment, I'm not going to go out without a fight. Mm -hmm. The wife says she wants half. She still going to be the owner. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. It keeps, as long as the name L.A. Clippers stays in our mouths and in the rest of the media's <clears> mouth, <throat> what happens? Value stays up. They have the vote June 3rd. And before you know it, as we talked about last week, you got so many prominent people that are going to be jockeying for position to buy this team. Even yeah. Because of Donald Sterling. Bingo. Right. He's don't, don't you just love this country? Dumb as a fox, isn't he? <laughs> even, oh, even, I can't, oh, I'm losing my team. I can't lose it. Wink. Even Arsenio Hall's throwing his name in the hat. See? And I'm sorry, Arsenio. Woof, woof. <laughs> but you haven't been relative. Or, I just lost my train of thought. You haven't been relevant for, what, 20 relative, years? Thank you. Yeah, 20 years. There we go. Doesn't he have a show on? Yeah, yeah, he does. He he's back on TV. I just don't know who watches it. I don't either. <laughs> maybe maybe he's trying to jump back on Magic's coattail. Yeah, you know, Eddie Murphy, you know, maybe. He's... All right, so let all right coming to we got the details on how this tape has came <clears throat> out. Drum roll. You, you, you know, as as long as this thing uh, drives, you know, the information just keeps flowing. It just keeps coming. Mm -hmm. But here is what happened. According to the New York Times. Uh, Sterling's wife, Shelly, it was suing, uh, we're just going to call her V, saying she, uh, you know, she extracted luxury cars, $240,000 in cash, and that $1.8 million house from her husband. Mm -hmm. So, what does the wife do? She, hey! She does what any wife would do. Give me that back. Itch, I want it back. <laughs> She's taking the girl to court, put a lien on the house and everything, yeah. right? Yep. Then, on April 9th, V received a text message from Clipper employees uh, stating that the ticket, uh, the tickets, the parking pass, and the luxury suite that Sterling gave her in excess, yeah, cut off, were sold. Right. Now she she unhappy. I can't go to the game. She unhappy. I can't be on the sideline. I already can't be. I can't bring magic. Right. Now yeah. you gonna take my suite and my ticket and my parking pass? And I can't park the Hyundai up close anymore. <laughs> So after the text mess, according to the report, uh, V sent an audio file of Sterling, Sterling making racist comments to the Clippers employees, who then passed it along to team president Andy uh, Roser, who then informed Sterling about the tape. Now Roser, you know, he had a you know, temporary leave or whatever he is, says he knew something about the tape. It's Sterling cold. told Roser to get rid of it, or the tape. But uh, according to the time, V also decided to get copies. Now, she didn't make copies. This ain't the only one. Q Gold Digger. Yep. And uh, she gave them to her friends to hang on to. And her friends, I believe one of her friends was the one that sold the recording to TMZ. Superhead. <laughs> I'm just, that's one of her friends. If, wasn't and there you, know, you know, she probably was. Yeah. Wasn't there something in that story about what? When V got told about it, she said something about, okay, game's on, so-and-so. No, I didn't, I didn't mention that on here. I thought, well, I, thought but, I read that a while but, ago. But uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure that that's probably what she said. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Nothing like a woman scorn. Well, nothing like a, a young. Even, <laughs> and even worse, nothing like a young, dumb woman scorned. Young, dumb, broke woman. She, broke woman, yeah, she yeah. broke. Because everything's got to lean on her. She yeah. can't do anything with it. Yeah, she can't do nothing with nothing. But here, but this is this, this just shows you the mentality of rich people. The Sterlings are worth what? Billions? And they worried about a couple Is she days. worried about $2.8 million mm -hmm. in cars and stuff? It has nothing to do with the money. It's the principal. That's my husband. I've been with him for 50 <laughs> years. Turn them keys in tomorrow, Trick. <laughs> That's what Shelly Sterling was saying. Yeah. I don't care how much money we got. It ain't yours. So give me the car. And I got enough lawyers to make sure you don't get any that, of it. That's it. So yeah. she's like, oh, okay. I can't keep these cars. That 100000 we're going to pay you off with, that's like tip money. And what, and what did Sterling even say itself? 
I should just kept my mouth a little shut and paid it all. all. <laughs> yep. You know. So there you are. That's it. That's it. So, so, so whether it's Sarge getting caught up in one of these situations, where if he just gave her the twenty dollars, yep. and let her keep the Schwinn bicycle, it had been straight. Everything had been straight, but he didn't. Now the tape shows up here at BCP, and me and Mike got to go on the air to talk about you. That's it. Cause you know we're gonna talk about you. I know you're gonna talk about. Oh, through the just drag your name through the mud. This, this anyway, will, I got five dollars for the both of you. <laughs> this will be a marathon session. And we'll be talking about you all oh, Memorial Day. <laughs> well, you know, ordering food. There you, you know, go. You know how my life goes. I spend my whole life waking on the weekend, and when it gets here, I don't do nothing. But, hey. You, you're anticipating nothing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Man, what am I going to do? And before you know it, it's Monday. Nothing. It's another weekend come and go. Move a TV is probably what going to do. Speaking of the weekend, NBA uh, conference finals continue tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Go Spurs go. In, yeah, the Indiana and, uh, and, and, and uh, Miami and OKC. And, Hold on a second. And, 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 and San Antonio. Where's, where's it at? Where's it at? What? I'm going to use this duck. This is crow right here. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and... Ooh, don't do that, man. <laughs> Not that way. <laughs> Y'all should have seen it from this side. <laughs> <laughs> I was eating crow. <laughs> okay. That's all I was doing. Put the duck back. Right. <laughs> Get my $20. <laughs> Put the duck, duck back. Duck you owe me. <laughs> And look, <laughs> Duck's eyes are closed. <laughs> He's got a smile. Oh. <laughs> oh. Okay, this is the last <laughs> talking sports we're going to be able to do. Oh, Lord have mercy. <laughs> uh, only on this show. Only on this show Ooh. does that happen. But anyway, anyway. <laughs> the analogy, you know, as we said earlier, <laughs> just stupid people doing stupid stuff. That would be me. I guess that's why I wore a yellow shirt. <laughs> I wanted to be one with the duck. As Sam is running off. Me too. And Mike's running off. I'm going to have to do the show by myself. I cannot believe that these two dudes are laughing this hard. <laughs> if you could only see what's happening down here at WBCP right now. They are in tears. I'm in tears too, to be honest with you. The duck can't stop smiling, and he won't open his eyes. Okay, anyway, I was eating crow because last Friday, I said that OKC would beat San Antonio. That was before I knew Serge Ibaka was a player. You know, this damn duck's going to have to go down because he keeps looking. you got to look on his face of satisfaction. I am so glad you PTV's here. <laughs> So you'll be watching the replay tomorrow I'm on YouTube, morning. I'm on YouTube when I get home. Watch this guy eat a duck. <laughs> like I said, from this side of the window. <laughs> it didn't look good. <laughs> look like you've done that before, Snowball. <laughs> but as I was saying, I'm good. I was eating crow, not duck, because uh, oh. last week, I, Mike, we were talking about predictions in the Eastern Conference. Western Conference Finals, and when we talked about the Western Conference Finals, I said I thought that OKC, after coming out of the series with the Clippers, would have enough to handle San Antonio. Boy, was I wrong. Yeah, you were. I mean, in two games, the margin of victory combined is 52 points. Those games weren't even close. If you, if you look at the game you uh, Wednesday night, Oklahoma City had no answer for anything that San Antonio were no. doing. I mean, they scored some like 60, 70 something points in the paint. Yes. And I guess that was about Surge. I guess he would have made a difference in that. But, I, I'm going to say this. But, but, he would have made that big of a difference. Yeah, exactly. Cause, they only lose by 20 instead of 30. Right, 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 right. You know, Westbrook and. He'd have been eating a duck. Westbrook and Durant. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, Westbrook and Durant on the, on the bench looking crazy. Russ is going to fight everybody. <laughs> I can't believe I did. I can't either. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, we did the cheeks and everything, didn't we? We had to get a copy of this. Oh, oh, what was that? Anyway, yeah, they Such had no answer. Russ. Yeah. Well, it, 
it's like I said, um, you know, when we were talking about it, of course, you ignored it, Joe. <laughs> but, you know, I'm like, Duncan's healthy, Ginobili's healthy, Parker's healthy, and they got Popovich. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, San Antonio, it is almost as though they are on a mission. Get that last one for Timmy. That's And to get that last one for Timmy, but to exercise the demon of game six of last, last year. year. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's yeah. almost as though they are so focused. It that When you watch them play, it's like, I've said it before. Surgical. It is. They go in, five guys come down, the ball moves around the perimeter, guys are touching it, setting the back screens, guys are rolling next to you, you know, somebody shooting a layup. And then after you, after about six layups, they finally figure out, okay, this is how you stop the layup. And then somebody's jacking a three wide open. <clears throat> and it's back and forth, back and forth. You come down on offense, you're going 100 miles an hour, helter-skelter, mm-hmm. throwing up some trash, and as soon as you throw Westbrook. it up. Westbrook. <laughs> thank you for Westbrook. putting a name to the trash. Russell. <clears throat> and when as soon as the ball goes up, Timmy's got the rebound. They're going the Ball's other way. kicked to uh, Parker over to Ginobili. Green shoots a three. He misses a three, but Splitter's there to catch the rebound and put it back in. I mean, they are just surgical, well oiled machine. Miami wins the series against Indiana. They will have to play four perfect games if they have any shot of beating San Antonio this year. Uh oh. So what are you saying? Uh, <laughs> LeBron James is not gonna get his I'm not three feet. I'm not putting that duck back up to my mouth again. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> that's not going to happen again. Well, and, and just just to point out, and I know in St. Louis they talk about the Cardinal way and all that stuff, and, you know, the Cubs talk about the White Sox way and whatnot. But um, <clears throat> having recently been living in San Antonio, that's all you hear about basketball is the Spurs way because they've had, they've had guys come in free agents, whatever. And, and the first thing R.C. Buford, who's the general manager, does – is he makes a determination on whether or not, because this is what Popovich insists on, mm-hmm. whether or not they can play the Spurs way. And if he doesn't think so, they don't even bother talking to him anymore. Yeah. Well, Spurs <clears throat> way, n- another pro team they remind me of, the Patriots. Yes, yes. Because just like we said about free agents, you go back to when Tom Brady came in in 99, 2000. Patriots have been relevant in the NFL championship conversation since the uh, – uh, that time when they won their first Super Bowl, here it is, 2014, and the Patriots are still relevant. The same thing can be said about San Antonio. Since Tim Duncan came in, and they won their first series in, what, 99? Something like that. Yeah, that's when he came in the league. Yeah. Since then, and it's been 15, 16 years, still relevant. Talking about relevancy, go to phone lines, 359-9227. Talking sports, turn your radio down, talk to us, call it. Yes, uh, a comment was just made a minute ago. Uh, by the way, this is Andre. Hey, Andre. Hey, that's my nephew. Yeah, that's I- right. That's right. Hey, uh, a comment was just made a couple minutes ago about the uh, up doing it the White Sox way. <laughs> that was me. Now, yeah. I've been listening to you guys for a long time. Mm-hmm. Okay? At least two, three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> that's too long. When do we need to start talking White Sox baseball here? Uh, Let's see. Seriously. Seriously? Mm-hmm. When, thank you, thank you, Mike. Come on, uh, I'm thinking about August, August, September, September, September when they start now. When they, when they drop the third, fourth place in the Central. Yeah. Last let's week see, of September. Let's see here. We drop, we drop Nate Jones for the year. He's out for the year. We find another reliever. Mm-hmm. Okay. Let's see. Lose Chris Sale for about a month. Look what he does last night. We lose Garcia, who is supposed to be better than what's the guy's name? Abreu, uh-huh. Abreu, who's now gone for two weeks, and we beat the uh, Yankees for the two last night. Well, I wouldn't yeah. brag about beating the Yankees nowadays. I mean, well, no, I, the Cubs I, just I, beat I, them, and they beat I, Tanaka. Yeah. Who hadn't been beat since 2012. So why are you <laughs> why are you celebrating beating a double-A team? Well, here's the thing. I mean, we're talking double-A teams. Oh, they're going to bring up this Chris Bryant. They're going to bring up this Baez guy. Let's bring him up because the White Sox are bringing the kids up. You know, it's exciting to watch White Sox baseball. In fact, I think the White Sox in this town 
should be considered the New York fighters. What do you think? I think that uh, you need to uh, increase the milligrams on your medication. I think you... <laughs> stop hanging out with him. Uh, you need to stop yeah. hanging out with your uh, Uncle Sarge. Uh, wait, and wait, wait, I think wait. the other thing is you need to start watching the Stanley Cup and maybe watch the Blackhawks to get your mind off a team such as uh, the losing Chicago White Sox. That's what I, I think. My, expe- my expectations are nothing. It's not the dog of the fight. It's the fight the dog, dog. Right, so... So Where's your fight at? What's so your point? Oh, yeah, what's well, your point? You right. Now, the last it's thing I, the last thing I will say to you, Mr. Sterling's nephew, is that. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, oh, no, 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 no. You can call me a lot of things, okay? <laughs> and we, that. and we have. <laughs> yeah, you remember I'm your twin brother. You're the one with the part of the silver spoon in your mouth. Yeah, well, I prefer the silver spoon than this duck that I have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll send okay. you a videotape of the duck incident I anyway. Mean, you, can call, you can call me a lot of things that I know you have, but uh, <laughs> I just don't know, okay? Well, yeah, like, like we said, Mr. Andre, uh, we will talk. No, 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 it's not Mr. It's Andre. Oh, I just tried to show you a little respect, Andre. Yeah, that, that's my on-air name, yeah. Right. <laughs> Well, we will talk about the Sox in August or September if they're still in the race, which we doubt they will be. If they're they not in the race now, who's it's wor- only May. Who right. cares? Yeah, who cares? About right. Who's worried about baseball in May except for uh, lonely guys and Tom fans and White Sox? Lonely fans. guys and medicated guys, which you're both and, and Viking fans. Oh. <laughs> On that note, we appreciate you calling Talking Sports. You call us. Uh, maybe once a year. Okay. I'll talk to you later. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Take care. Hey. Thank you, Andre. Wink, yeah. wink. Yeah, we ain't going to get into baseball. What were we talking about? We were talking about OKC oh, being yeah. surgical and, you know, and then I said that Miami has to play four perfect games if they want a three-peat. And you asked me what was I saying. And I said I'm not going to eat duck anymore. I, I, I made him face the wall. <laughs> I, don't want Joe, I don't want Joe to get tempted. <laughs> well, wait a minute. Let me turn him sideways. Yeah, he's asleep. Okay. Yeah. But, uh, I, hey, I can admit when I'm wrong. That's not too often. Mm-hmm. But like Mike said, I ignored everything he said last week. Because I looked at the fact that, you know, okay, see, you've got the reigning MVP. You've got an out-of-control point guard. <laughs> And Ibaka does play some semblance of defense. I just thought that not only does OKC have youth, but they also now have experience. Right. As before, it was just youth. And right. I thought that was going to be enough to beat the Patriots of the NBA, which is San Antonio. But <clears throat> now, two years ago, but we got to, when I say two years, 2012, same thing happened. San Antonio jumped out. 2-0 on OKC. Mm-hmm. OKC came back and won four in a row. I don't see that happening. Because everybody in San Antonio is healthy. Right. Now, I don't That's see it happening. Now, they go they go back to OKC for two. Mm-hmm. Then they got to do their crazy one one one, 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 one. Right. Yeah. Whoever came up with that idea at the board beat should have had their head cut off. Probably Donald said, Sterling. Uh, it's the guy who from Great Britain, 12 years a slave. I got a great <laughs> idea. Run with it. We're going for coffee. But, but yeah. Two. I'm looking at a possible sweep here, Joe. With OKC and mm-hmm. San Antonio? Mm-hmm. The way San Antonio's played, that's not that's not necessarily a crazy idea. But they are going back to OKC, so I it it, it wouldn't surprise me to see them get maybe split in OKC. Now the reality the reality of, of NBA basketball is what has San Antonio done if we want to put it in the right context? They did what they were supposed to do. They held service at home. Right. They won two games at home. All you got to do is split away. If, as Mike said, if they split in OKC, now game five's back at home, you can collect song books right then. I think that thing is right. over. But if OKC somehow, I can't see it realistically, if they somehow pull out both games in San Ant- I mean, at home, and then go back for game five, and that's a pivotal game. You know, we've seen stranger things happen right. in the NBA, but right now, just based off these two games, you know. Now, now the rumor has it that the checks have already been. I said this at the top of the show that the checks have already been sent out. There's no money in the Indiana, uh, San Antonio 
final. No. Well, there is for that Belgian brewery, because if San Antonio's <laughs> in it, they're going to be rocking in San Antonio. Oh, yeah. But remember, we've talked about this for, for, for weeks and months now, you know, uh, my conspiracy theories about a lot of stuff, but it all boils back to economics. The league, if they have a choice, they would want to be able to market Kevin Durant versus LeBron James. Right. Oh, yeah. That's, if you go back, remember when Nike was doing those puppets with LeBron <laughs> and Kobe? Mm-hmm. Because the goal was to get LeBron in the final against Kobe because they wanted to be able to market those two individuals. That's where you're at now with uh, the league in terms of Durant and LeBron James. If that doesn't happen, how do you market? And and, that, and I guess that goes to the, the point about, like you said, the checks have already been sent out. How do you market Indiana versus San Antonio? Oh, I know how you would do it. And, and it, it would... Well, I know I have an idea. Um, and a lot of it has to do with whether or not you're a basketball purist, but is this Tim Duncan's last go around? Right. But it goes now, but mm-hmm. there's the point. What you just indicated, you said a basketball purist. What the league is looking for yeah. is the casual yeah, fan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we talk about that all the time about right. whether it's the NFL, who they're marketing to, and now the NBA, who they're marketing to. That casual fan out there who doesn't know really anything about basketball, but they know who LeBron James is. They know who Kevin Durant is. Don't know anybody on Indiana. And and, yeah. and Tim Duncan is the most unassuming superstar in the history of the league. For basketball purists like ourselves and others, we truly appreciate what he's right. done and the fact he's done it at the <clears throat> highest level his entire career. Right. You know, some guys you see – Okay, maybe now Duncan's coming off the Big bench or yeah. right, you know, right, something exactly. like that and giving you no. He's still a starter, he's still relevant, and he's still giving good minutes and But I, I think even for the casual fan, to see what you know, we talked about earlier, you know, they pass it in, they pass it around, there's there's the open three, there's the the dunk, there's that whatever. I think even that to a degree would be intriguing because you don't see it in an NBA game. Yeah, and see, I'm the opposite. I think the casual fan now, people like uh, uh, the running and gunning, gunning and, and, and Well, it's the, the me, me, me. Right. The, the generation of the me, me, me's. And, and because of that, you've got kids at home who don't want to see passing. They want to see Durant score 50 and LeBron score 47 is what right. they really want to see. Mm-hmm. They want to see D. Wade get 30 and see uh, Russell. You know, maybe score 35. That's what today's generation want to see. And then they want to equate it to the shoes. So that I got on KDs. I wear KDs right, because right. of even though your game ain't going to change one bit. And I'm going to Subway every day. They, see? And that's why they're trying to tie those teams in. I think the biggest boom, like I said, OKC, Miami, the key for the NBA period. Miami has to at least be in the series. If Indiana's in the series, and it's Indiana San Antonio, flat line, mm-hmm. Indiana KC, OKC, or could, Miami period, just for the sake of the three people. Right. You just that I think that's where you get some of those storylines. But yeah, in terms of marketing, and then the uh, to segue from marketing, and we talked about this about the NBA draft. Speaking of the lottery, <clears throat> Cleveland, three first-round picks in four years? Wait a minute, I, I seem to remember hearing very specifically coming out of his mouth. Lakers. Lakers, number one pick, number yeah. two pick, one of the two. Well, uh, top three is what I said. You're having a bad year. Move the duck. Yeah, between duck in my mouth and <laughs> Super Bowl. <laughs> Super Bowl. I am, I am my predictions. <clears throat> but let's, let's go back to the lottery itself for a second. To give Cleveland three first-round picks in the last four years, let's go to my other conspiracy theory now. That was for, that was for LeBron James leaving. Is that right, right? But I'm looking at you two, and I'm saying to you, but. Cleveland's chances of getting the number one pick was 1.9%. Is this, and I'm truly asking that question, are the league going over and above not because of the team, 
but because of what happened to the city economically when LeBron left. The amount of money that was taken away in terms of restaurants and hotels and other businesses in the city of Cleveland, how much it declined when LeBron James left and went to Miami. Well, but don't you think Stern should have told who, who's the owner of Cleveland, Snyder? Gilbert. Dan Gilbert. Daniel Gilbert. Don't you think Stern should have told Gilbert that? Because he's not, they're not very good. Yeah, and but that's why I'm looking at it from the standpoint that how far they, how bad they were until LeBron got there and they went right back to where they were as soon as he left. And it seems as though the league went, has gone out of its way to try to get them relevant again. Yeah, right, but right. if you got three of the number one, one, this will be your third number one pick, you already had two number one picks, and you still this lousy, what does that say about your team, period? What, no, what does it say about your management and who they pick? Your right. last year you picked the number one pick, which was Anthony uh, Bennett from uh, UNLV. Is he even in the league? You only <laughs> average four points. And, and what's one eyebrow from Chicago doing down in New Orleans? There you go. Anthony Davis is Anthony Davis. a perennial all-star. You got Kyrie Irving the first time. Then you got Bennett from uh, UNLV. Now the conversation is, do you get Wiggins, Parker, MB? You know, what? how do you work this thing out? But I'm looking at it going, wow, between them getting number one and then the Bucks getting number two. But what happened in Milwaukee? The team was just recently bought. Herb Cole just sold the Bucks mm-hmm. for about five hundred and seventy-five million dollars. So you got a new owner coming in. Let's give him a pick. Let's. There you go. Then you got Philadelphia, who got, got the, the third, third pick, pick and the tenth and pick. the tenth pick. Yeah. And then the Celtics and Lakers that I banged the drum about. Well, they just have to continue what? to suffer. Six and seven, Six and respectively. Seven, right? Yeah. You know. But, well, but 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 even still, at it, at that pick six and seven, they still should be able to get a decent enough player because there's a lot of good players. This draft is deep. Yeah. This and this is one of those drafts. Now, for you know your nuance, newer NBA fans, they go back to '03 when Wade and LeBron mm-hmm. and those guys. I go back to the Barkley, Lajuan. Uh, Clyde the Drive. Clyde the Glide, Michael Jordan, Sam you know, Bowie. John Stockton, Boot. That draft, I think, is reminiscent of this draft here. I I, I don't know if there is a, a Jordan or a Stockton or, you know, somebody like that in this year's draft, but it's deep. And there are a lot, a lot of good young talent. But the other thing is, there's a lot of good upper class talent that we haven't seen in a while. You know. I still look at Adrian Payne out of Michigan State. Whoever gets Adrian Payne is going to get a steal. Oh, yeah, they are. They're going to get a steal. They're going to get a big man who can play all over the floor. And there might be one of those teams, San Antonio. I can see San Antonio Payne drops because they pick all these young guys. And he drops late in the first round. And San Antonio steals him and brings him in, grooms him. And next thing you know, you got another Tim Duncan. Yeah, so. Interesting. We're pretty close. Yeah. Because yeah. he's paying goes, what, 6'10", 6'11", something right. like that. He's a 7-footer for all intents and purposes. Mm-hmm. Who can shoot. Shoot, rebound, handle the basketball. Play defense like a... And he's very unassuming, just like Tim. Right, exactly. All right, now, we just went from OKC, San Antonio, to the draft. We just skipped right over Miami and the Indiana series. Is it relevant? No. Apparently not. <laughs> I think now that Paul George, the question mark on him with the concussion. I mean, he might, he, from they say game he two, might be clear to play. I did think. Hibbert give him that? Or? I think Hibbert paid somebody, some <laughs> Dwayne Wade to knee him in the back of the head. Um, is it relevant? Yeah, it's relevant, but because of all the issues Miami had against Atlanta and against Washington, and then they win the first game. I mean, it's that Jekyll and Hyde did exactly what we expect them to do in game one, blow Miami out, but then came back in game two like they couldn't even play, you know, and <clears throat> shot a horrible, what, 30-some-odd, 40-some-odd percent from the field, a lot of uncontested shots they couldn't put in the basket, and then they let, I mean, it was like you, you, you it was like watching a storm coming over the horizon, and there was nothing you could do about it. 
LeBron James had 10 points at the end of the third quarter. They even asked Frank Vogel before the fourth quarter started, what do you think is going to happen? Oh, he's going to take over. And he did. But not only he did, Dwayne Wade, with all the conversation about the knees and mm-hmm. too old or whatever, it was Batman and Robin all over again. And it was almost like Indiana with a deer in the headlight, like, oh, once again, we don't belong here. As opposed to, you know, it was like, here's your one chance to show that things have changed, and they did. What well, has it? Based off that game, I'd have to say no. Game three, uh, tomorrow. I think it's tomorrow. Saturday, Saturday right? right? Yeah, tomorrow night. Paul George has got to play. In Miami. Right. Because here's the thing. Miami wins tomorrow. They're up 2-1. It's over with. And now that pressure. And with all the other <laughs> issues that Indiana's having off the court and on the court, and then you put that pressure of a must-win game four on the road, they don't win that game. What happens? Oh, All right. And then if it's over, what happens to that team? You're probably going to implode. Larry Bird probably starts jettisoning some guys. Even George. Mm-hmm. I don't even think Paul George is safe. No, I, th- I agree. Because I he's the problem. Every, that whole he team, was one of the problems. That whole team would be available. And then that's where you can see some crazy draft day. You know, George and somebody. Willing and dealing. <laughs> George and Hibbert. George and Hibbert. They're going to be joined at the hip forever. From <laughs> Milwaukee. Right. <laughs> I don't want to go there. So, yeah. So, it, 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 is it relevant? It, it will be for another 24 hours. But Now, when is the uh, draft? June 26th. June 26th. So, as soon as the finals are over with, you'll get your draft going. And after you get your draft going, right in the summer league. All right, we got to take another break. Uh, we had a baseball fan called earlier. Uh, out of the baseball world, the Los Angeles Dodgers release catcher Miguel Oliver. Olivo. Olivo. The biter. Yesterday, two days after the dugout altercation in which he allegedly bit off part of her teammates here. A la Mike Tyson. Hey, this is ridiculous. <laughs> I need some salt. (laughs) It says, according to Salt Lake City Police, Guerrero, who here he bit off, uh, declined to file a complaint with the police about the incident and that uh, would have been the first step toward criminal prosecution. So I guess they ain't going to send him to jail, but they kicked him off the team. He said during a spring training interview with Telemundo, uh, Oliva said that he... If he weren't a baseball player, he would like to be a boxer like Mike Tyson. <laughs> really? Well, at least he's picked up all his traits. You know, I just would like to hear his apology. Now, we knew Mike was just straight up nuts. You could expect it. You could expect him to knock you out of, or, or do something else crazy, you know. Mm. But uh, I think it takes a special kind. To just... Go up and gnaw off somebody's ear. I just want to know what's in the water in Indianapolis. You know, to, to what's say to make you. I mean, you look at Mike. Where that happened at? Paul George, Roy Hibbert. Has Olivo ever been to a White Sox? Wasn't he a White Sox? You know, he's been to Indy. Oh, of course. Had some coffee or something. Oh, or something. <laughs> a little duck. I mean, you gotta be special. I'm sorry. You gotta be special to do that too. Which brings me to this. No, it's not gonna bring me to that. Yeah, thank you. So uh, we're gonna step down, take our last break. Uh, the afternoon when we come back, we got uh, what we gonna talk about. We got some sports news. Police are looking for T.J. Ward. Uh, strip clubs and NBA, I mean, and and and, and ball players that just don't go together. We didn't told you this a million time on top. Like oil and water, just don't mix. Don't go to the strip clubs. We'll be back right after these. Welcome back. Talking sports. Tell me, BCP. Duck is scarred for life. Uh, right. <laughs> that duck's face hasn't changed since, <laughs> since the incident. So what do you say? He's going to be down in the basement covering it, cowering it. 
Oh, ducky. <laughs> Please, come upstairs and set up for dinner. <laughs> If you live in Champaign Urbana, please get up at seven o'clock tomorrow morning <laughs> and watch this show or TiVo it or something. Oh, you will laugh the rest of the weekend as okay, Sarge we'll and I will do. And and at my expense, you will laugh. And I'm glad I have a sense of humor because uh, right now I've got duck all over. Me. <laughs> Oh my goodness! Okay. Trust me. Uh, right. We we find humor in some of the sickest things, but I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, people. If if you would have seen it, I, as me and seven o'clock tomorrow it, morning, talked about off the air. The funniest thing had to be was the look on Sam's face first. He's looking straight at me like, "What are you doing?" And Mike is behind me, and I didn't know he was. Mike was kind of getting some enjoyment out of it. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't know he 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 swung that way. <laughs> I didn't know you'd do a duck. Right. I didn't know you'd do a duck right on TV. Oh man. Oh boy. So yeah. So you know, oh, and, only on WBCP Talking Sports 1580. Uh, those folks <laughs> listen on the World Wide Web. If you get an opportunity, oh. go on to uh, YouTube tomorrow. They should have the show loaded onto YouTube, and you'll get to see the incident. This would never talk- happen on ESPN. Yes, it would. That we know of. Right. right. It just get cut out. Oh. It'd be on the blooper reel. It would be. It would definitely be on that blooper show. No shit. But I as would. I said, it's glad that we can have it's a good laugh. It's all in the day's work. <laughs> well, for Joe, maybe. You know what the duck you gonna do? Yeah. <laughs> duck happens. Hey, yeah, dude. So I was talking about some sports, will you? Okay, what we got here? Let's see. You don't go home and dream about this tonight. I already told him. I said, I'm going to go to the bar tonight and say, bartender. Oh, man. I need a shot of something to get this duck out of my mouth. And watch hands turn. And it degenerated from there. Right. Okay. Exactly. Uh, all right, police have issued an arrest warrant for uh, Bronco safety T.J. Ward on an assault charge to a fight in a Denver strip club May 9th. Why did they wait so long? Because he's been ducking the law. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't going to stop. It ain't going to stop. <laughs> okay, uh. Oh, forget it, man. We just... <laughs> that, you know what? what? That was real professional right oh, there. Okay. You just said, I'll forget it. Just, you know what? I like that. Okay. But I think to your point, seeing if I can pull the horse back by the reins and, okay. you know, make this duck relevant. I think when you said, why does it take so long? Usually when you've got, for lack of a better term, high-profiled individuals like athletes. The police are put in a very sensitive situation. (laughs) They want to make sure that they nab the right guy, for the lack of a better term. And I think we've seen with other stories in the past how athletes being high-profile targets sometimes can be falsely accused. And I think that's why you see sometimes... What is wrong with him? (laughs) Hey, <laughs> when, when you get the giggles, sometimes you can't come back, you know. So he politely excused himself. himself. He needs to go wash his mouth out. You know. but, but I think, you know, going back to the T.J. Ward story, I think that's really what you're seeing now is that with uh, the celebrity status of athletes, the money involved, and the fact, you know, we're talking about a team that just went to the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. The Denver PD... Well, they said they, they, they have no information about the incident. Right. So they just kind of like keeping this on the down, down low. low. That's hush, hush. And the other thing that we've seen, and I think uh, ESPN Don't outside the lines did a study about how much uh, behavior or, or negative behavior happens <coughs> during the downtime, like when the players are not doing OTAs and they're not doing the mini camps and stuff like that. 
And you think about it, right now is the downtime in the NFL. The, the rookies just did their mini camp, but the veterans didn't have to be there. You know, so this is when a lot of these type of activities happen. We just saw Ray Rice uh, plead out mm-hmm. to the situation. He's now married, so he got to plead out his situation. Um, it was somebody else who just had an incident. Oh, man, I'm trying to think who that was, but, you know, we're going to mm-hmm. see this type of activity. You know, we talked at the beginning of the show about money, young athletes. And you think about a guy, a T.J. Ward, not really a household name. No, well, you know, he been to the Pro Bowl. Uh, well, he was second team Pro Bowl last season. Mm-hmm. Just signed a big old contract. Say for, that again. Stop right there. Say it again. Just signed a big old four-year contract for twenty-two point five million. <clears throat> so what happens when? And how old does it say? How old T.J. Ward is? Uh, no, it doesn't. Probably twenty-five-ish. There you go. Twenty. Probably that second contract. Right. Twenty-seven, maybe. So now you're a Pro Bowl. Twenty-seven. Twenty-seven years old. Think about when you were twenty-seven. And what would have happened if somebody would have given you $23 million at 27? Now, he's been going to the strip club. Before. I mean, it ain't like he ain't been. It is, this is not like, His first I got $27 million, I'm going to go to the strip club. Mm-hmm. No. He's now going to the strip club, and he also has $27 million. What do you think happened when he walked in? Got to be here. It's raining. Bingo. And what happened to the other guy sitting around in the strip club? Oh, who that dude? Who do you think he is? Mm-hmm. Oh, that punk. Yeah. And all, now, the, all the girls get up off their lap and run the head. There you go. Because <laughs> it's raining $100. And what would you say about the eye contact when you're walking down the street? First one that blinks? Mm-hmm. So the thousandaire is sitting over there, and the millionaire walks in. All the girls get up off their laps and run to the millionaire. Right. The thousandaires, you know, oh, I was making it rain. Ah, that was quarters of nickels, you know. And that stuff hurt. Right. This guy's got a pocket full of paper. And next thing you know, the word back and forth, you ain't nothing, blah, 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 blah. Man. That's it, testosterone. Yeah, it's terrible. Testosterone, deadly. Yeah, that's true, too. Deadly. Because of testosterone. <clears throat> if he's 37 years old, does this happen? Oh, no. <clears throat> he's not in strip club, first of all. He's at home. He might have some strippers come over. But he ain't at the club. But he ain't at the club, right. So if he's making it rain. Unless your name's Jim Mercer. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Well, he's just riding around. Right. Riding dirty. So youth, testosterone, and money, lethal combination. Speaking of uh, the NFL, they put the Johnny Manziel, Johnny Football, relegated to the third team. Mm-hmm. Now, this is still early. It's a rookie camp. So, I'm thinking it's just to get him some reps, period, with, you know. But I'm pretty sure once the preseason starts, he'll be competing for the starting job. Well, I mean, allegedly all three of them will be. But, you know, you don't draft them and sign them to big money to sit them for a long time. There you go. Particularly I, when within 12 hours of the draft, his jersey's the best-selling one in the NFL. There you go. We talked earlier about the NBA and so, marketing. So, so nothing else, they just keep him around to sell jerseys. Well, no, he's going to end up starting. He's got to play. The Browns. Oh, yeah. He's got to play. And he's he's going to, you know, at least that first scramble will be exciting, and then, you well, know, somebody the size of Ray Lewis knocks his head off. Think about in the past couple of years, I think it's like five quarterbacks have been drafted in the first round in the past the last two drafts, not counting this year's. And all five of those guys – ended up starting first year. It is, to Mike's point, you bring these guys in as a franchise, you're selling to your season ticket holders, these guys are the savior. Even though, the way Mike described it, he runs around. You know, think about when Cam Newton, his first year down in Carolina. Showstopper, Cam mm-hmm. Newton. Everybody thought, oh, man, he's he's the man. 4,100 4, yards passing, running for another – Five, six hundred yards, touchdowns, doing the Superman pose, all that. Second year, teams got to figure Not out. so much. Not so good. Last year, a lot more humble pie. Cam Newton, third year, gets to the playoffs. Gets put out by Colin Kaepernick in the 
So there's that maturation process, but Manziel's got to play because of the money and it's the. Remember, you <clears throat> laughed at me when I talked about the idiots. I'm gonna sell to you idiots. And, mm-hmm. Right. That, but that's what it is. Well, it's, season tickets are almost tripled in Cleveland. Now. See, it's Johnny Football. Ball. So why would you draft him and sell all these tickets and sell all these jerseys? Well, come on. I paid twenty-two dollars for a season ticket last last season, and now it's costing me eighty-eight. Yeah. Because of Johnny Football. Got to pay for that contract. That's it. Got to pay for uh, all the all the additional revenue generated by Johnny Football. Hey, Johnny Football, you better learn that playbook quick. Because you will be playing. Now, success is a different conversation. Will he be successful? Well, we all know that. You know, let's look at Seattle for all the success that Russell Wilson had. He happened to be the quarterback of the team with the best defense in the league. Mm-hmm. And a monster running back standing behind him that he could hand it to. And the guy would go through like the Tasmanian Devil. So, Russell Wilson, you're like, if you look at his stats, was he really off the charts? Average? Charge? No. No, he was good. He was a, he's a, he's a good quarterback. Right. He didn't lose them any games. Okay. And Johnny Football, Johnny Manziel, Manziel is a talented young man. I mean, he's got the skills. Will they translate as well on the NFL level as they did down in College Station? Who knows? But all he has to do is not lose the game. Right. But the tough part for him is that not losing the game. Not losing the game because <laughs> he's he's got. He's got confidence in his running ability. Uh, he's got confidence in he, his He likes to throw him up, too. Right. Yeah. And throwing him up can get you in trouble oh, in the NFL. In the NFL. In the NFL. There so, you go. I mean, and believe it or not, he's not, you know, I scored a two on the wonder like stupid, but, you know, someone questioned some of his decisions. But he's a relatively bright young man. Mm-hmm. So, you know, and, and he's got – he, and what they did, the ownership did and the general manager did, you know, your third string coming in. So hopefully he's smart enough to learn a little bit and watch and all what that I, stuff. What I do like, though, about <clears throat> today's rookie quarterbacks compared to the eras gone by is that because of the way football is played at all levels, well, majority, I'd say 80, 90, 90% of high, high school and college teams are running what they call pro systems. Mm-hmm. So it's not as though they're learning anything that's, you know, like some advanced mathematician uh, teaching uh, kids who just have had, you know, basic algebra. He's been in a system. Kevin Sumlin down in Texas A&M is one of the more sought-after offensive minds in uh, college football. He comes from uh, the state of Texas, which a lot of guys in the league already come from the state of Texas because of what? They groom their players to play this style of football at an early age. So, uh, to Mike's point, that's where I think a part of that talent comes from. Is that he's been playing at this type, of, this style of football, most of his career. Well, and the other thing you said about a lot of guys from Texas, a really good example of a similar sized quarterback, not necessarily arm strength, but is Drew Brees. He's from Texas, mm-hmm. and you know, down there, high school football is a religion, right. and they're playing that, as you said, that pro set even in high school, right. and you know, they got the athletes down there to do it with. So, right. Speaking of ticket prices tripling, <laughs> California Crow run the, won the uh, Preakness in good fashion. They said going into uh, the Belmont Stakes that uh, there was a chance that uh, – now he runs with a read right on his nose or something like that. Yeah. Cold yeah. strip. Yeah. Now what these things do, you know, they open up your nostrils so you can breathe mm-hmm. better. You know, horses, you know, once they get to running, their nostrils get out of there like that, you know. But, uh. Could probably shove a duck up there. Yeah, probably. But they saying that uh, there's a chance that he, they, that they won't let him wear, but I guess they okayed it. Oh, yeah, because he's a legitimate triple crown threat. Right. And thoroughbred racing needs one because it's been since 77. Yeah. So, to, to bring some excitement to the sport and to, quite frankly, raise his stud fee. Yeah, they, they need a triple crown player. Yeah, and, and prices that went up at uh, for the Belmont Stakes also right. all, three times, four, three fold. Might see history. So, yeah. Now my question to you two: We went from what twenty horses in the Kentucky Derby to 
to 10, 10 at the Preakness. Now we're going to the Belmont, which is a mile and three quarter. How many horses do you actually anticipate being in that race? Again, 10 to 15. Yeah. You think it'll still be double digits? It'll still be a small one. <clears throat> I think it'll be closer to 10 than it will 15. Right. But, but I'm pretty sure they're going to get horses in there to get this California Chrome. A run for his money. Yeah, a, a little, test. Yeah. Right. See if he can actually win it. Yeah, now, like you said, that, that, you know, a lot of people probably sitting here listening going, you go from a mile and a half, about three quarters, that's not, you know, not a big leap. Oh, yeah, it is. Yes, it, it is. is. It is a big leap in the fact that, especially the style of horse he is, mm. he wants to come out of that gate fast. Yeah. And if he comes out fast and comes out too fast, and the jockey does whatever he can to try to control him but can't, and he gets to that last quarter, half mile, quarter mile, that breathe right <laughs> strip, he's going to have to have two of them to open up his nostrils because uh, he might burn out. And you think about how much money, we keep going to this money aspect, but this, how much money is on the line right now if he does when, as you said, a firm was the last one in 77, 78 to win a triple crown. He wins that triple crown this year. And the story behind it, you know, the, the guy who, right, right. you know, stud fee of what, uh, $2,500 and, and, you know, 3200 for the, the sire. Yeah, it was like 7500 or something like that. Yeah, but was, basically, 10 grand. Yeah, cheap horse. And now you go from rags to riches. That. <laughs> That will, to me, be the story of the summer, and as you said, bring some uh, additional positive news to the uh, world of horse racing that you haven't had in a long time. As long as Tom Hanks doesn't make another movie, we'll be fine. Okay, now the uh, Belmont is ran will be June, second week in June, tenth, oh, something like that. Yeah, somewhere around there. Yeah, it's gonna be is. something to watch. Yeah, I'll be tuned in because I love to watch ponies run. Yeah, I would. I, like I said, I. Just for the sake of history and the fact it's been so long, and with that background story of, of California Chrome, I would definitely like to see it happen. We had to have a a Belmont Stakes watching party, watch party. You got plenty of TVs. Yeah, I know. I have four. You got the TVs. He'll bring the drink. I'll bring the duck. No, you, don't you leave the duck. My duck has been scarred for life. That ain't like. Your duck being scarred has nothing to do with me. <laughs> You're going to be all right. <laughs> okay, let's see. Uh, Kevin Ollie said he's going to stay at UConn. He got rich when he said that, too. Yeah, they gave him a, he signed a five-year contract worth $2.8 million a year with an incentive that can push it up to $3 million, a year, uh, $3 million per season, basically doubling his salary. Wow. See what winning a national championship can do to your pocket. And think about, he's got nothing in Connecticut to spend money on. Right. Stores. Pfft. Where is that, anyway? It's up there somewhere. Get you a nice house. What's the capital of Connecticut? I have no flipping crew, crew, clue. <laughs> crew, clue? clue. Ain't, it, ain't it, uh... Clue. Isn't it, uh, Hartford or something like that? That might be. Yeah. That might be Hartford. You would know that. You should, wouldn't you? What's Your that? hobby that you do five days a week. Because isn't the other one named after the oh capital? No. The Hartford? Yeah. They have the big buck as their moose, not a duck. Symbol. <laughs> hey, we should call. <laughs> we should call. Bloomington, the seats will change the logo. What? Bloomington, seats will change the logo to a duck. Duck. <laughs> no, I think the ducks already use Aflac. Aflac. Well, not a yellow one. <laughs> a little <bit. laughs> A little yellow. That'll fit in the mouth. Ooh, we. <laughs> oh! Let me see what else I got here. That's all I got. Uh, local. Local stuff. Yes, sir. Start with uh, Girl State Track Me. Champaign Central's own Renaisha Turner went down to... Is she related to Clyde? Uh, no, she isn't. Devin Turner's daughter, uh, Big Wayne. Big Wayne? Mm-hmm. She uh, qualified for state. Really? Shot put. She didn't make it to the finals, but... Uh, she has gone to state the last three years, and so I just want to mention that and just say congratulations to her. She's a senior, so you know, it's her last opportunity, but a uh, fantastic way to end your career going to state. Uh, 
Renaja will be going to Illinois State, and hopefully she'll be able to get on the uh, track team and be involved in field events over there. But I just want to give a public shout out and say kudos to her and her yes. family. Fantastic career, fantastic student, but even better individual. You know, and and you know I think when we talk sports and we joke around a lot, but we never get a chance to really, when it comes to the individuals, you know, local kids in town. I want to give them a, a big pat on the back. Um, Jay Price, shocking news at St. Thomas More. Chris Minnick, who was the coach when St. Thomas More won the uh, state championship this year. Uh, he was fired, wasn't he? What fired? Quit. He, he removed himself. I, I know I'm, I'm being very technical with this, but he removed himself as the head coach over there because he was under investigation uh, through uh, federal authorities, IRS, etc some personal finance money. Uh, he did put his name back in the hat, but St. Thomas More decided to go a different direction, and they went with former Illini assistant Jay Price, who was an assistant here for like nine years mm-hmm. under Coach Weber. And so that's, to me, a, kind of an interesting twist that, you know, you win your state title, and, you know, Menning had been over there, I want to say, at least six years. Yeah, he's been there. Six, what? seven years, and, and now to go a different direction. But you're going a different direction with a guy who's coached at the highest level. You know, they've got the top three scorers coming back in St. Thomas Moore. So uh, that'll be interesting to see coming into fall and uh, winter as to what happens. Do they stay on that same course and go back and defend their state championship with Jay Price at the helm? Uh, First string baseball. Uh, Shout out to, uh, first of all, on Tuesday, the Creative Marble uh, Suited League team won a very uh, close game, 5-3. to three, And I want to give a personal shout-out to Bashan Stanky Fire Frazier, Pat Frazier's boy. And the reason why I want to give a personal shout-out to him, the reason why I call him Stanky Fire, if you want to see a kid wind up and do a funny motion on the mound, we said he was doing the stanky leg when he wind up. But, man, was he bringing the heat. And he came in to close the game out with, Runners on first and second, and you know, in little league, that that mental pressure, you see, a kid crack real easily, but for him to come in and close the game out, I thought was really impressive. He only ended up facing, I think, uh, four batters, and I think the, the team record is now six and two. Got rained out on Wednesday, the big yeah. rainstorm that came yeah, through. Yeah, I saw, I saw him, uh, I saw him warming up out there. I thought they were gonna go ahead and play. Yeah, we're gonna try to get in a double header, but the <laughs> rain uh, washed that away, and then they had farm league. Uh, game yesterday and then they're going to have another farm league game today because uh, Friday is makeup day but uh, kids are getting out there and, and getting at it and the little shorties the 46 year olds should be starting to play pretty soon in terms of their teams and so it's just as e- each week you know things get a lot better out there and I'm just excited waiting for the uh, construction of the farm <laughs> league field that's going to happen and the way I understand yeah, it that won't happen until late July early mm-hmm. August and there'll be a pavilion out in that area, so you know it'll increase the activity. Hopefully, everything will be in place by Champagne or Banner Day. That would be that's, fantastic. That's, that's, that's sweet. Huh? That would be sweet. Yeah, that's my understanding. That uh, matter of fact, they're supposed to be starting on as soon as school is out. So. Right. Uh, other thing locally today is boys sectional and track. So uh, uh, good luck to all of the guys over at Centennial <laughs> Central, uh, Urbana, SCM, uh, your local schools. In terms of guys trying to get down to Charleston next week, like I said, girls are going right now. Boys will be going down to Charleston next week. So good luck to all those schools and what the guys are doing. Yeah, there. school is just about over. Speaking of school being over, congratulations to all the graduates. Uh, University of Illinois gets had in. their graduation last week. Uh, Eastern Illinois had theirs last week. Uh, did we uh, just have a graduate? Did huh? Uh, area. Arian, yeah, Arian, she graduated. Arian Brown, she graduated from the University of Illinois. Then you got the high school. There. When is their graduation? I want to say high school graduations when are. When is school's at? Well, school will be out next week for everybody. But I think going to your point about graduation, Centennial used to do their graduation at the Assembly Hall, and right. so did Urbana. Right. But because the Assembly Hall is really not really available, Urbana's doing theirs at their football field, you know, a new facility there. That's good. Centennial is going to Cranor, like Central. So I think theirs is Wednesday, 
And I want to say Central's is either Tuesday or Thursday of next week in I terms mean, of that. Remember back in the day, school didn't get out, out until about the first or second week in June? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Start, didn't start up until after Labor Day. Yep. 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 <laughs> I would, I, on that, and I'm, this will be very pol- politically incorrect, but I would love to see them get rid of this agrarian calendar that they've used. The what? Agrarian calendar, you know, the farmer's calendar. The reason why the school system and the calendar is set up the way it is, is back in the day, kids would get out of school at this time so they'd they go, go help on the farm. farm. Yeah, right. And then once you do your harvest, then they could go back to school. Well, I don't see too many farmers around here. And I would love to see them go to more of a balanced calendar where, you know, you get out of school now, but you're only out of school for like six weeks, not the entire summer. And then you go back to school like mid-July, and then you go until October, then you get a three-week break. And that's what the balanced calendar is. There's a couple elementary schools. Barstall's on Barstall's on that balanced calendar. Uh, I think Kenwood. And how's that working out for them? Oh, my kids went through it. It was fantastic. Because you get enough time to do your summer stuff, the six right. weeks in the summer. But it's not like, you know, the kids are laying around <laughs> all summer. Better in terms of retention because when they go right. right back to school. I understand why you couldn't do it in the past because you've got to make sure your buildings are air conditioned because if you're going back to school in mid-July, it's going to have some uh, hot days mm-hmm. in those buildings. But I would just love to see, get more towards that balanced <laughs> calendar. I think it works better for everybody. You know, some people say, well, you know, my schedule, your schedule will adapt. Yeah. And just like in Europe, they go to school. When I was over in Germany, they go to school year-round over there. Everywhere other than the U.S., they go year-round. No wonder we're like 27th, 31, you know, when it comes to math and sciences and stuff like that. So. Yeah. On a, another local note, if I may interject, um, the College ho- Football Hall of Fame, I think they voted yesterday, and two former Illini players were on that. Dana Howard and Simeon Rice were on the ballot, but I do not know if they made it. So. Okay. Oh, also Hall of Fame, Nat, NASCAR Hall of Fame in, uh, inducted their first black uh, driver. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Who was it? I can't remember. I was watching the Sports Center the other night and it was on. So you just. They was talking to his daughter. You know, so. Was it Wendell Willie, Holmes? Or yeah, something, Willie something, T. something. Willie something T. Like, ribs? Something like that. Yeah, it might have been ribs. Ran around with the, uh, <clears throat> with the three or four boxes of. Westbrook Jigger in his back truck. <laughs> Moonshine. 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 I always get a kick out of that, though. That's how NASCAR got started. Yeah. And, oh, one last thing. This weekend, you just talk about motor racing. Indianapolis 500. Oh. That's correct. Yeah. Don't greatest, know about that. What do they call it? The greatest <laughs> spectacle in sports. In sports. I don't know about it. The thing I like now is that, you know, they telecast the race live remember way back in the day they you'd listen to it on the radio then you had to watch it then you had to watch on why we were sports sports, and they would do you know just snippets of the race and you know you'd always hear jackie stewart you know commentating on it chris economaki and you know man i'm dating myself yeah i mean you realize half the people listen or three quarters of people listen have no idea who you're talking about that's really what everything i talk about (laughs) well that's true but real racing fans watch the indy anyway I'll listen to it. It's on the radio. Right. And see, like Mike said, visually, when you end up watching them, it gets tough because it's just a, a left turn, you know, four left turn. But if you've got a good announcer who can give you a good descriptive of what's happening. Make it sound exciting. It does. What's it, really fun is to drive that two hours east of here and go watch time trials. That's a blast. Yeah, they're going on this week and last week. Yeah. yeah. Well, they just talk, it's free, I think, or still is. They it's talked free. about the fact that if you if you go to the Speedway, some trivia or fun facts, you can fit every Major League Baseball park inside the infield. That's how big the infield is. And they say if you're watching the race live, they said because of the speeds of the cars, you literally have to pick a point on the track. You don't watch the cars. You focus in on a point because if they say if you try to follow a car, you'll never see it. 
That's how fast they're traveling. TV cameras seem to keep up with them. Well, they said that that's the thing. When you watch it on TV, you don't get the appreciation of how fast they're going. They say if you watch it in person, they say if you try to like follow a car, number one, the track's too big. You can't see the entire. Two and a yeah. half miles. Right. Yeah, two and a half miles. But they said the other thing is if you just try to, you know, oh, there's a car, before you say there's a car, the car's already gone. How much faster do you think they go other faster than the NASCAR? Well, they're reaching right now with 230, 235. Yeah, I would say 225, 230, easy. Right. Uh -huh. Easy. Right. And, and NASCAR is running, you know. 180, 190. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Might hit 200. And remember, we talked about that a couple years ago, about the restrictor plate racing. Yeah. That's why everybody's bunched up on NASCAR. You know, and they want to keep it that way because. It's a more interesting race. Oh. Plus, we're waiting on a big one. You know, three and four wide. Mm -hmm. All righty. Where we at? Ooh, that's we didn't want. OT again. Well, that's going to do it for this edition of Talking Sports. We do this each and every Friday from 2 to 4 or a little after. So be sure and tune in again next week. We'll lace them up and we'll do it again. Well, Mike. Keep your ducks locked up. Joseph. Man the duck. Duck the man. Never looks good. Yeah. Come on, baby. I got somebody you can talk to. They're going to get you all right. You, th you think just the duck needs counseling? <laughs> That's why both of them are going. <laughs> I'm going to take this shirt off right now. <laughs>